俺は3年でここまで強くなった腕立て伏せ100回上体起こし100回スクワット100回そしてランニング10キロこれを毎日やる<笑>それは一般的な筋力鍛錬だおしかも大してハードでもない通常レベルだ Hey everyone, welcome to the third review of Taki Soba. I'm Nate here with joining both my otaku friend Milesh. Hey guys. And today we'll be reviewing a rather recently finished anime that's taken the whole world by storm. It's known as One Punch Man. And as a non otaku, I have to say, I have never seen an anime go quite this viral. I've been on Reddit, NeoGAF, Imager, Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, YouTube, even a PBS show here in America. Made a reference to One Punch Man. Everyone, all the cool kids are talking about it. I've seen copious amounts of references to this anime this year. So, what have you got to say about that, Malesh? Well, Nate, I'm also a bit surprised to see how popular One Punch Man has become. You know, I actually read the manga before the, there was even an anime announcement for it. So, while reading it, I never really came to me that this will become the next big hit. You know, the last really big hit we had in the anime community was a t i t a n Titan. And I read that again before the anime because I'm a cool kid. And. I was reading it, I was like, I can see this becoming the next big thing, and as we all know, it did. But for One Punch Man, which had a pretty simple plot where you have a guy just, you know, killing things with one punch, I never really thought that this is going to take off like it has. But thanks to his very good comedy and animation, it has. So, would you say Nate has lived up to the immense hype surrounding it? Yes. Absolutely, Milesh. But I think it's been a little bit overhyped, but probably on purpose. This anime is like. Off the charts, crazy and ridiculous. And I think for that reason, everyone saying, you know, what's the best anime ever made? is probably just being ridiculous like the anime itself.、Um, this anime is pretty much a parody of the whole superhero genre and all the tropes in it. And I think the comedy is great. And probably why it's being so well received in the Western world. There's not a lot of, you know, Japanese specific things in there. If you like, you know, action, I think you can get all the comedy here in the West. Some people, like I said, call it the savior of anime. I think they're just. You sure about that, Nate? I think they're being a little bit silly. I'm sure they're saying it. I'm not sure that it is the savior of anime. This anime has got some copious gore in it, but it's pretty cartoony, you know, fantasy violence sort of thing. So if you can get past that freaking gore of, you know, them ripping an eyeball out of Crab's head, then I think you can probably find this anime just fine. I think this is definitely one of the top animes of the year for both otakus and non otakus alike. So, Molesh, let's get more in depth with the story. One Punch Man debuted in the fall season of 2015 with a grand total of 12 episodes. Now, I know you're thinking 12 episodes is pretty short, but for the most part, it actually works out very well for the show because the pacing doesn't feel that, I guess, obnoxiously fast. It feels pretty tight and compact. And moving on with the more sort of details, like Nate said, the story is pretty much a bunch of parody superhero tropes. So, to start off with, we are in a world where basically you got demons, gods, aliens, pretty much anything you can think of trying to kill all these guys in Japan. Now, for some reason, in this world in Japan, all the cities are named after the letters in the English alphabet. So you got City A through City Z. Now, to kind of combat all these monsters attacking Japan, the government has created the Hero Association, which places all these heroes in different categories, going from rank C, which is the lowest, to rank S, which is the highest. The Hero Association and their tasks basically serve as the bulk of the plot progression of this show. Despite the protagonist being invincible and defeating everything with one punch, the show doesn't really stagnate, and it's really intriguing to see how the characters develop, even the minor heroes who have a lot less of the spotlight than One Punch Man himself. And on that note, let's discuss the characters. The titular character is, of course, One Punch Man, but he actually never takes on that name of the show. Even before he joins the Hero Association and after, he just goes by his given name, Saitama. And, um, he's got pretty much undefeatable strength, and with that, he's like relaxed, hard to impress. Nothing stands out to him. And the secondary protagonist is this teenage cyborg named Genos. And he's saved by Saitama early in the show. And he pledges to become Saitama's disciple in order to improve his own strength. So, in stark contrast, Genos is pretty much extremely devout and noble, and、uh, always very formal and seeks literally nothing else in life other than to be a hero.、Uh, much of the comedy derives from the juxtaposition of these two characters. I always find it pretty hilarious whenever Genos acts for, you know, like a lesson or some deeper meaning, and Saitama just. 
makes up some BS off the top of his head. Aside from these two, there's a lot of recurring heroes and villains that we'll be seeing later in the show. Pretty much a lot of the supporting characters in the show are going to be heroes from the Hero Association, who all have very unique kind of tropish personalities. Like, for example, you got Tornado, who was this very lolly like character. Sundari. Who pretty much is very powerful because she's like rank three in the S rank. So, she, of course, she's very like world renowned, but no one really likes her because he acts like a swallowed brat. After Shaitama himself, his character development doesn't really go through much. He kind of stays the same from the first episode to the last. So, if you're looking for like the next best character development show, this isn't really for you. But there are some with Genos. He pretty much starts off as a very impatient teenage brat that doesn't really understand kind of how the world works. He pretty much has very not thick skin. For the most part, he really can't take a joke. Eventually, however, thanks to Saitama being this very lax guy that does joke around a lot, he pretty much becomes a very patient, calm, and collected guy that eventually learns to sort of man up in a lot of ways. Now, we're going to talk about the studio that blessed us with this great anime, Madhouse Studios. Now, Madhouse Studios did a pretty excellent job of this show. I think they throughout pretty much 2015. They made shows like Parasite and even before that, Hunter x Hunter, which had been pretty well renowned just for their animation and storytelling. So, whenever I heard that one Punch Man was going to be animated by these guys, I was pretty confident that they could actually do a good job animating it. Because if you look at the manga of it, it actually has very amazing detailed art that you can really tell the author pours his heart and soul into. But God bless Madhouse for actually making an anime that looks amazing just as the manga. I, too, personally thought that the animation was pretty great in this anime. Uh, aside from his own style, really switches a lot from really bland and undetailed for comedy purposes, and then it suddenly switches to like a super detailed shonen sort of pose. And it's pretty funny whenever it happens. Uh, it gives just a little bit of extra flair to the well-done, silly tone of the anime. And I think, like Ping Pong the animation, there's a lot of really good scenes in this anime, which are direct callbacks to like panels in the manga. If you put a page and you know screen cap side by side, we'll see a lot of really, really good adaptation of the manga. And uh, they even included the really famous OK scene, just directly in the anime, which is pretty funny. In addition to the shonen style, there's also a pretty powerful rock style opening song to this uh, anime. It's pretty much one of the more viral aspects of the show, because anytime I see anyone mention the show, the post fan art, there's always going to be a hundred thousand comments of people saying the same thing. <laughs> With that epic guitar riff, and it is pretty amazing. I think it's pretty much the best part of the soundtrack. The rest of the soundtrack in the show, it's not bad, it's good, but it's like, it's not memorable. It doesn't stand out to me. It's um, it's pretty much, you know, appropriate with the action theme, but it just sort of, it's there. Yeah, I agree the soundtrack isn't too memorable, at least for me it wasn't. Unlike, let's say, some other shows like Cowboy Bebop, which had an amazing soundtrack, this one has a decent one, but it's not something that I wanted to be like, yo, let's, let's, let's jam to some One Punch Man soundtrack. Now, the opening is amazing, like Nate said before, I gotta talk about the ending, and there's only one. And it's pretty alright. It's a very soft ballad song, which is kind of weird, but it fits the tone of the show a bit, and I enjoyed it for what it was. Now, we're gonna talk about the Japanese voice actors, because clearly, we're Japanese. Yeah, I <laughs> Oh, know, wait, right? we're not. Oh. So we really can't critique how they did in terms of delivery and stuff like that, but I guess we can just say that, hey, we thought they did good. Yeah. The talented voice actor I thought was very well done, and the cast did seem to enjoy their time with it. Like, uh... One thing I like about Japanese dubs in particular is just the comedy aspect of it. Because voice actors do a great job of delivering it in a slapstick way pretty much all the time. And I will point out, for all the anime newcomers out there like myself, I'd say that the subtitles of this show, because there's obviously no dub, it's too new, the subtitles are pretty perfectly structured and well paced. Um, I definitely don't think you should wait around for a dub. It's, you know, watch it now with the subtitles. They're slow subtitles, they're not really verbose. And I think if you're not a speed reader and you haven't watched a lot of subs, this is definitely a good starter anime. To conclude, I think One Punch Man was a very great anime from last year. Honestly, if you look at my top 10 anime list I have not posted, it's like number two on my list, only behind Shirabako. And it really does complete the trifecta of action, comedy, and even animation in terms of just nailing every single moment of it and making it something that I feel any person could enjoy and watch. It's definitely a good one. One for the ages. Instant classic. You can actually stream One Punch Man on three different platforms right now. Um, Hulu, Daisuke, and Viz Media. And I think the Viz Media site actually just has embedded Hulu episodes. Yep. 
I'm pretty sure they're all free if you go to the website, and I'm almost positive the Hulu one doesn't require a paid subscription. So if you want to watch Hulu on your actual TV, I think you'll be able to do that for free. I'll have all the links in the description below for the platforms. As always, if you've already seen One Punch Man, click the first link in the description for our after show, where we have a more in-depth discussion, but it includes spoilers, so don't watch it if you haven't seen the show. And uh, be sure to leave a like and a comment on this video for feedback, we really appreciate it. And that's just about it. Thanks for watching our review of One Punch Man, and we'll see you eventually with the review for Tatami Galaxy. No problems this time. Yeah. Peace. Don't die. Sayonara. You're not Japanese. <laughs> I can believe, Malesh.